You often come across the need for displaying pop-up boxes while creating interactive user interfaces. Natively, JavaScript does allow you to create pop-ups. An alert box is the simplest one, which displays a text message and an OK button that closes the alert box. Then we have the confirmation pop-up, which also displays a message and an OK button. But in addition, there is also a cancel button. Click the OK button and the confirmation box returns boolean true, whereas clicking the cancel button returns false. And that's the difference between this one and the previous alert box. The alert function returns nothing when the OK button is clicked, whereas the confirmation dialog returns a boolean value. So the result of the confirmed dialog can be assigned to a variable. This value can then be used to decide the subsequent actions. The third type is the prompt box which displays an input field and a label. Clicking the OK button returns the value entered in the input field. So like the confirm function, prompt can also be assigned to a variable, for instance getting a name or number from the user. These native browser pop-ups does the purpose but they are plain and utilitarian. They may not match with the overall design of your site. That's where Sweet Alert comes into picture. It allows creating stylish and customizable pop-up boxes in place of native browser alerts, confirms and prompts. Not just that, you can also create complex things like multi-step booking forms or even a quiz by chaining multiple alerts together. The easiest way to get started is by adding the Sweet Alert CDN link to the HTML head. But the recommended way is to install it from NBM or YARN, then compile the code using Webpack or Browserify. After initiating an NBM repo inside the project folder, run the NBM install Sweet Alert command. That will add Sweet Alert to the package.json file as a dependency while the files go inside the not modules folder. Now we can import Sweet Alert at the top of the JavaScript module file and start using it. However, notice that we are using the import statement to bring the Sweet Alert function to the current file. So if you try to load it directly using the script src tag, it gives an error. Cannot use import statement. The import statement is part of the ES6 module syntax which may not be supported on all browsers. Latest browsers do support loading module files if you set the type equals module attribute on the script tag. But still it can be problematic for browsers to correctly load the dependencies. That's why we need to compile and bundle the JavaScript modules using a tool like Webpack. Webpack is also a JavaScript package, so install it from NBM as a development dependency. Also create a Webpack config file which lists all the source files we want to compile along with the corresponding destination file paths. You may also set the watch option to true so that Webpack keeps running while we code, compiling and bundling the files in real time. Now open the terminal and run the command nbx webpack to start the webpack process with the specified configurations. Optionally, you can also create an alias command under the scripts section in the package.json file. So now you can run nbm run webpack which does the same thing. Since we have set the watch option to true, webpack keeps running in the terminal looking for file changes and recompiling every thousand milliseconds if there are changes to the files. The compiled files go within the dist folder and it is the compiled file that we add to the HTML file. So that's how you set up Sweet Alert using NBM and Webpack. Now let's see some examples. In its simplest form, call the Sweet Alert function and pass the message text as a string. This is how it looks. The message hello world and an OK or confirmation button. But to gain more control, change the argument to an object. For instance, we can set the title, text and an icon. But that's not all. As I am making this video, Sweet Alert supports around 11 options in total. You can find the list in this API documentation. Regarding the icon option, Sweet Alert supports four types, success, error, info and warning. And this is how a success alert box looks like with an animated checkmark icon. 
error alert shows a red cross icon info box has an i button and the warning box shows an exclamation sign let's consider an example that resembles a real world use case suppose i have a profile page with a form a save button and a delete button upon clicking the save button we get a success alert if the backend could successfully process the submitted data otherwise if there is something wrong for instance if a required field is missing the server sends an error status and we see the error alert required fields missing this is where we handle the form submission using javascript first we get the field values and add it to a form data object followed by submitting the data to the backend php script using the fetch api taking a look at the backend php code it's the simplest example i could think of PHP just checks if the required fields name and email in this case are present or not. If yes, it returns a success status and the response message encoded as a JSON string. Otherwise, if the required fields are missing, it returns an error status. Back in the JavaScript file, we get the fetch response and convert it to a JavaScript object. Then with a the switch condition, we can check the value of the status key. whether it's success or error if it's success show a success alert setting the icon value to success otherwise set the value to error also set the text value to the message returned from the backend so that's how you display an alert based on the response received from a server so far we have only seen alerts with just one button the okay button what if you want more buttons to display a cancel button set the button's property to true now there is an okay button and a cancel button corresponding to true and false respectively by the way closing the alert by clicking outside is also equivalent to clicking the cancel button which returns null but what if you need more than two buttons to give users multiple options to choose from rather than just an okay and cancel button for that change the button's property to an object that's what i have done for this delete account button deleting the account is a serious action so a warning alert box that asks for confirmation is the best fit set the title and text to something that wants the user think for a minute action cannot be reversed etc it stops the user from careless actions but in addition to the delete and cancel buttons we are also giving a third option pause subscription which is less severe than permanently deleting the account and it's made possible by setting three separate values for the button's property delete cancel and pause i also set the return value for each so when a button is clicked that value will be returned so the variable confirmation gets the value of the button that is clicked and we can use that value to decide the subsequent actions if it's delete continue with deleting the user's account permanently here i am just outputting that to the console else if it is pause pause the subscription downgrade the account to a free plan like that or else if it's cancel do nothing also note that i am setting the class name property for each of the buttons it allows you to set custom class names for the buttons i just set it to bootstrap button class names maybe some custom css can also be added to completely override the default sweet alert styles another thing you might have noticed is the keyword await in front of the sweet alert function call that means the sweet alert function is returning a javascript promise and the promise gets resolved to the value of the button that is clicked JavaScript is asynchronous so the promise gets resolved later when the user clicks a button until then the promise will be in pending state and JavaScript continues executing the remaining code so we add the await keyword in front of the function call to make JavaScript wait until a button is clicked that makes sure the constant confirmation has a resolved value That brings me to the next point that is chaining multiple alerts. Let's go to another example. 
Here is an imaginary theater booking site which allows checking ticket availability for various short times. The first alert asks the user to select a short time. There are two buttons corresponding to morning and evening shows. If I click morning, the second alert shows up saying if tickets are available for morning show or not. On the other hand, if I had clicked evening, the second alert would be different. Sorry, no tickets available for evening show. Here the value selected in the first alert box is used to decide what the second alert would be, thanks to JavaScript promises. Like in the previous example, I created the two buttons by setting the buttons property. Also set the values morning for morning and evening for evening. Now when a button is clicked, constant show time gets the result value of the promise, either morning or evening. Then check if tickets are available for that short time or not. By the way, the ticket counts are already stored somewhere else. If number of tickets greater than one for the selected short time, show a success alert. Otherwise, show an info alert saying sorry, check again tomorrow. Here in this example, there are only two short times, so two buttons are sufficient. But in many cases, you will want to offer more options. For instance, what if you want to allow four or five short times in the first alert? Showing four or five buttons in a single alert is not a good idea as it can confuse the user. That is a bad user experience. So we need to give the options within a select field. That's exactly what I have done in this upgraded example. The first alert shows a select field with four short times to select from. But suite alert by default does not give an option to add a select field. Then how did I achieve that? Fortunately, there is an option called content which allows you to set any HTML as the alert box's content. So I created the HTML string for a select field with four options inside corresponding to the four short times. I also added some bootstrap class names to style the fields. Then with the help of the JavaScript DOM parser class, I converted the HTML string to a DOM node. And finally added that DOM element as the value for the content property. Now when the check availability button is clicked, this alert box need to return the option value that the user has selected in the select field. Setting the value within the button's property alone is not sufficient because it sets only the initial value. Instead, we need to change it whenever the user selects an option. For that purpose, we can use the setActionValue method. It allows setting the value of the confirm button whenever you need. So I added an onChange event listener to the select field. So whenever the option is changed, the setActionValue method gets executed, which sets the button value to event.target.value. Now this short time value is used to display the second alert which says whether tickets are available or not. If available, there are two options, stop there or proceed to buying tickets. Proceed and you will be taken to the next alert, that is the third alert. There you can enter the number of tickets to buy within a number input field. Unlike in the case of the select field, Sweet Alert has an option to display input fields, so there is no need for any custom HTML. You only need to set the content property value to input, also set the required attributes. Entering the number and clicking the purchase takes you to the fourth alert, where it displays the number of tickets you have purchased for the selected short time. On the other hand, if you click cancel in the third step, the fourth alert shows an error saying cancelled. A few things to note here when dealing with number values in the input field, make sure to typecast them properly using parseInt or parseFloat functions. You can also use the isNan function to check if the value is a number or not. In real cases, you may need more complex logic and error checking. But I hope this example helped you to understand how to create multiple chained alerts using suite alert. You can also find the examples I have used in this video in my GitHub repo if you want to try them out.